Welcome back to Practical Caravan TV. Now, in a little while, we'll be getting chilly in the Arctic, but first, we're getting a little bit warmer and a little bit drier at Colchester Holiday Park. Although it's based on the outskirts of this historic town, Colchester Holiday Park has a much more rural feel than the name might imply. It's a family and pet friendly site with a good sized play area for children and a small dog walking area for the family pooch. The actual town of Colchester is just a 15 minute walk away and has a busy high street for you to explore with lots of shopping options and more than its fair share of history. Not least because it's the oldest recorded town in England and was the capital of Roman Britain long before Londinium came along. There are Roman remains to see and a castle to visit, plus a world-class zoo close by. You're also very close to Constable Country and Willie Lott's famous house, the subject of the Haywain, John Constable's most famous painting. Back on site, a small shop carries most of the essentials that you're likely to need. Plus it offers Calagas sales and Wi-Fi access, although it's worth pointing out that coverage is mostly around the reception area. There are three toilet blocks here, so you're never too far from a loo, and those bathrooms are kept clean and tidy, which includes this bright and airy facility for the disabled. There are washing up areas outside, and laundrette facilities inside. The shower blocks are spacious and clean, with gas and electric heating all year long. Yes, you can pitch up in deepest midwinter too, because Colchester Holiday Park is open all year round. There's no clubhouse or entertainment on site, but being so close to town, plus the fact that there's a bus stop just a two minute walk away, means that it's pretty easy to visit the hundreds of bars and restaurants that Colchester has to offer. And space shouldn't be a problem either, because the site has 145 touring pitches, with half of those being hard standing. 119 of the pitches have electric hookup, but there are only 10 super pitches. So if you need running water, electricity and grey waste disposal from your pitch, it's best to book up well in advance. Opposite the main children's play area, you'll find facilities for washing your caravan. And just behind that is a wastewater point. And if it's storage you're after, Colchester Holiday Park can offer that too, as well as caravan sales, both new and used, if you fancy upgrading your van. The facilities that the site offers has earned it four golden pennants from the AA, and several other awards and recommendations, including a four-star award from the Visit England team. During the winter period, it's quite quiet. Yeah, very quiet. Yeah, very quiet, quiet but um, it's not rowdy or anything in spring or summer. No, it's, but when it's full up, it's all full of it's all family. Yeah, it's just family yeah, it's noises, which is lovely. One of the facilities they offer, which I thought was really good, is that um, when you leave, if you want your caravan washed, they'll do it for you, which I think is really good. I've never seen that before. So that's, I'm absolutely over the moon with it. Nine out of 10, definitely. So if you're looking for a site in East Anglia with convenient links into London and one that's not too far from the coast, then why not give Colchester Holiday Park a try? Now, believe it or not, but summer is just around the corner. But Bailey is already thinking about next winter, and our Nile joined them for an epic cold weather test. Welcome to Ivalo in Finland. We're 200 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle. Why are we here? It's not every day of the week we rock up in a place like this. Simple, we're on Bailey's Arctic adventure. Even though I'm a part-timer, just flying in for the Finland section of the trip, it's been an eventful few days. And I'm never going to forget driving a three and a half ton motorhome across Finland's largest ice road. 
This is a six mile stretch from the mainland across the frozen Bay of Bothnia to the island of Hailuto. If you'd rather not risk your pride and joy, there is a ferry. But this trip isn't called the Arctic Adventure for nothing. But driving caravans and motorhomes in extreme circumstances is only one small part of this story. I'm with Simon Howard from Bailey, who's going to tell us a bit more. Simon, this has been an epic adventure. Thanks, Nile. No, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us here in Ivalo, Northern Finland. The aim of the Arctic adventure was really firstly to show with modern caravans and motorhomes, they're very well insulated and they've got great heating systems, so you really can use them all year round. They're genuine four season vehicles and we obviously wanted to give a practical demonstration of that. As you're aware, we, we put the vans in cold chambers in the UK to test them yeah. uh, for their suitability for, for use in cold weather conditions, but nothing actually beats being here in the flesh uh, in extreme temperatures. Give you an idea, we've got the gauge here. When we left the UK, the temperature was probably somewhere up here. It was in double figures. Uh, in Ivalo today, minus seven, as indicated by the icicles hanging off the awning light. So it is, it is very, very cold, but very snug in the vans at night, no issues at all. You can power it on electric only. In fact, mm. some nights we've actually turned the heating down. It's been that warm. Mm. But uh, really are great vehicles to get out and explore the wonderful countryside we have. Mm. And that's really the second part of the Arctic adventure was to show you know, what a great adventure you can have in a caravan. I mean, mm. we've, we've traveled 2,600 and 70 miles to get here so we're just over halfway on our 5,000 mile challenge. To me, having been on the trip, it's really shown me that with a caravan or a motorhome you get to see other parts of the world that other types of holidays just can't reach. So sure. it really is, it's been a great experience for everyone involved. You've been pleased how things have gone today at the test track? It's been entertaining today. We, we, we learnt a lot and we did some interesting braking accelerating tests today. It was very interesting how ca caravans, car and caravan together and motorhome performed in terms of braking distances. Mm. And then we've been taught how to drive properly in the snow. Maybe it would have an idea if we'd done that before we got to Finland. But uh, um, the experts here at Test World, which is owned, uh, is owned by Millbrook UK, um, they've shown us how to drive uh, properly in these conditions. And mm. it's been very interesting and people having a bit of fun spinning around uh, the circular track at the moment behind us. Simon, it's been great to be here. Thank you very much. Following the drama on the ice road, we set off for our evening stopover, Ranoa, which was the best part of 150 miles north. Things were definitely getting colder, with temperatures well below zero, so one definitely needed all those layers and thermals. The cars and caravans behaved very well though. And in case you're wondering, the Arctic Adventure outfits were both four berths. A Bailey Pursuit 534 and 554, each one towed by a Volvo XC90. A great choice of tow car in these conditions, and fitted with winter tyres of course. My second full day in Finland saw the convoy progress to Rover Niemi, capital of Lapland, the home of Santa Claus, and smack bang on the Arctic Circle. Now the trip could really claim to be Arctic as well as adventure. Pulling up at Santa Claus Holiday Village, we popped in en masse to see the man himself, handed over some present requests for next Christmas, and got up close and personal with some reindeer too. Not as stressful as the ice road driving, but a ho, 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 ho load of fun. Later that day, we followed our satnavs to Ivalo, 200 miles inside the Arctic Circle and home to Ivalo Test World. This was where we would subject the tow cars and caravans to some extreme driving conditions. The other main attraction in these parts are the Northern Lights, a naturally occurring astral phenomenon which people come from all over the world to see. Unfortunately, they didn't come out for me while I was there. Notoriously hard to predict, you generally only get a couple of hours notice. This didn't stop the locals saying Northern Lights tonight, but which night they actually meant was unclear. Oh well, maybe next time. Now Test World here in Ivalo is a proving ground used by motor manufacturers from right across Europe. They use it to test the car's performance in difficult conditions, just like this one. Now earlier on I took a tow car and caravan out on this particular track on a deceleration test. The idea of it is simple, you get to 35 kilometers an hour and then you slam the brakes on. 
Now, last night at the campsite in Ivalo, temperatures got down to minus 11. I was sleeping in this caravan and I found it really warm and toasty. So therefore the heating system must have been quite good. I don't know much about this particularly, but luckily Martin Fitzpatrick from True UK can enlighten us a bit further. Martin, what system is fitted to this van? Well, the uh, Bailey Pursuit, as we see behind us, and I was uh, in the uh, matching caravan last night as well, and I was nice and warm, is fitted with a Combi 2 system. Um, it's the baby brother of our systems. We make a Combi 2, a 4, and a 6, uh, and that's a smaller one in the range, uh, but it comes as standard isn't in the Bailey Pursuits, and uh, as we have it here, it's uh, uh, coped with the best Arctic conditions that we have, and I think uh, most of the gang who've come with us have actually been uh, uh, very complimentary about how quickly it's performed because uh, you know last night when we pitched up we had a super quick uh, setup got all the steadies down and put the heating on and within 10-15 minutes we were quite comfortable in there and searching for the coffee cups for our first brew of the evening absolutely now this system, does it have any modifications to be able to use it so effectively out here? Or the heating system fresh? is as standard. Uh, we've made one or two small changes to the gas system because obviously at some of the very low temperatures we've actually put a, a small heating system within the regulator, would you believe, mm. to actually make sure that you can still use the gas at these uh, super low temperatures. But the heating system itself is, uh, is, is uh, factory standard on all the new pursuits. And actually, you know, a heating system is made of two things, the heater itself, but obviously the insulation of any product. Mm. Uh, if we were making it super warm, super quick, but losing all of that heat through uh, a poor insulated product, then we'd actually be uh, fighting against those super low temperatures all the time. But uh, in, in this product, we were finding that on a two kilowatt gas setting mm. with a, uh, an additional 1.8 of electric, brought it up to 3.8 kilowatts of power, and it's been uh, coping with the toughest conditions that we've been able to throw at it. Excellent. Well, I can certainly testify to that, and I'm looking forward to another warm and toasty night in this particular van. Martin, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome now, thank you. So I've just spent two nights in the Bailey Pursuit 534 and I've been very impressed with how it's performed in such cold conditions. The temperature outside has ranged from anything between minus 9 to minus 11, so pretty cold. It's one of those kind of colds that when you stand around without moving outside, your toes really get it within 20 minutes. So this is pretty good. We've just left the heating on overnight, 18 degrees. We haven't woken up at four or five in the morning cold. It's been absolutely fantastic. And the layout of the van is actually pretty good for two people sharing. You've got this big double at the front here in the lounge and at the back, the luxury and comfort of a fixed French bed, all very agreeable. In fact, the only issue we've had is the further north we come, the wastewater pipes have frozen. Basically, we can draw water in the van. We just can't get rid of it. It's not a major impediment. You just use a plastic bowl in in the sink and you throw it out in the morning. So all in all, very good credentials on these vans. The grade three insulation is really good. So obviously it is a genuine four season tourer. Now, in as much as we're doing today, I believe we're gonna be going out skidooing in a minute, snowmobiling as by its alternative name. I could really get used to this kind of lifestyle. And sadly, my time on Bailey's Arctic adventure is drawing to a close because I'm preparing to fly back this morning. The team, on the other hand, has seven more days of punishing schedules to test these vehicles to the limit. So has it been successful? I think so. I've absolutely loved sleeping in these vans overnight without any impediment to my sleeping welfare whatsoever. And pushed to the limit, these caravans have done very well. So is it mission accomplished for Bailey's Arctic adventure? Hell yeah! Well, that's it for another show and indeed another series. But don't worry, plans are already well underway and we'll be shooting the next series very soon. In the meantime, you can keep up with us on Twitter, on Facebook or via our website. And do look out for our summer specials, which will be along as soon as the sun comes out. Until then, thanks for watching and happy touring.